That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. And today's Daily Dose of Stupid, I'm sure that you've heard about this before, so I'm not going to harp on a lot of the details, but you may have heard the other day that President Trump made what, in my mind, was a dumb move, but I'm going to explain that there is some nuance in it and, and something that people should understand. I'm more, I'm more knocking the stupidity of what it looks like than what it actually is. So, President Trump threatened to adjourn Congress yesterday. This is something that in the entire 240 plus year of us having a, a president, or sorry, 230 plus years of us having a president, having a Congress, this is a power, a check and balance that has never actually been used at any point. And so essentially what it revolves around is that if the Congress is not meeting, if the Congress is not in session, if they are in a recess, the president has constitutional power to adjourn Congress, and that would also give him the ability to make what are known as recess appointments. In other words, he would be able to appoint judges to the federal circuit without them having to be confirmed through the Senate because the Senate would not be meeting. So here's really where I come down on this one. This is one of those stories where there's a lot of stupid to go around. Like, it's not just President Trump. There's a lot of stupid on every side of this, even though he's kind of feuding with the members of Congress. I think that there's a lot of stupidity going on in Congress right now, too. I know that that's not exactly a groundbreaking declaration, but nonetheless, it is something that I believe. So it's a thing where Trump is well within his constitutional rights to do so. If you're asking me as a constitutional matter, hey, can Trump actually do this? I would say, yeah, yep, Trump can absolutely do that. Well, what if Trump is saying that the reason that he's doing it is to get recess appointments through? That well, doesn't matter. Trump can still do it. I, I know a lot of people are not going to like that answer, but just understanding the Constitution as I do and, and the way that I read it, I, I don't see how anybody can make the argument that Trump doing that would be unconstitutional regardless of what his motivation is. Now, I wish his motivation were something different, but even if it weren't, like if, if he's just doing this as a strategy to go ahead and get his federal nominations through, I think that it looks really bad, but he's well within his rights to do it. And so this is one of those stories that I'm not questioning the intelligence of the decision when it comes to, can I do it? I'm questioning the intelligence of the decision of, should I do it? Those are two very different things most of the time. So the way that President Trump came out with this and the way that he phrased it, the way he, he said it, and I'm sure I'm getting some media spin on it, and that's fair. But it's also fair to acknowledge that, yeah, they're spinning it some, but that's really what he meant. I don't think that any intelligent person that has been following President Trump doubts the fact that, yes, he was saying that that was his motivation and that's what he actually meant by saying it. Now, I say this as a person who thinks that one of the few really bright spots that I have very little complaints with President Trump is, is with his appointment of justices. I think that Brett Kavanaugh was not a fantastic choice, but I think that it was certainly better than some of the choices that he could make, and, and we'll see where Brett Kavanaugh falls when it comes to that. So, you know, I have no problem with Trump wanting to get his federal nominations through. I, I don't. I think that that's overall a positive thing. But this is not the right way to do it. Even if you have the power to do it, I think that there are smarter ways to do it, especially when you would be using a method that literally no president from George Washington all the way up to President Trump, none of the other 44 have ever done it. And I think that it would be really intelligent for him, even if that were his secretly his motivation, for him not to say that. His point of frustration is not unfounded, though. Because the point that he was making the other day, look, you guys do your jobs and actually vote on these people. Now is not the time to have that fight, though. I think that Congress, especially if they're going to be asking certain parts of the American population, we just did a segment right before the break talking about how we're looking up to, I think, legitimate American heroes when it comes to people that are keeping our groceries on the shelves, people that are farming, people that are teachers that are helping their students out, even though school's not in session anymore, uh, doctors, nurses, 
we're looking at all of those people and saying, no, you have to work. Teachers are a bit of an exception in that category, but they're saying, no, no, it's okay for you little people, you peons out there in flyover country. It's all right for you guys to go out and do some work and keep the economy at least somewhat running and keeping our society going, but not us. I mean, we have more important things to do, and it's just not safe for us to congregate together. I remember when Thomas Massey called for a quorum vote, which, by the way, he did so with like three days' notice, so it's not like they did, he did it at the last minute anyway. But their argument was, oh, well, we can't do that. It's unsafe for the members of the House to come together. I was like, but it's safe for the truckers, and it's safe for our utility workers, and it's safe for basically every other job that we've deemed essential. It's, it's just the little people that, oh, it's okay if they go out and risk getting the coronavirus. You people up in Washington, you elites, you're the ones that are worried that, that you might catch it which is a legitimate concern and they should be cautious about it. But ultimately it's a really bad look for Congress to say, no, no, you people can go out and work. We've got to stay safe. Yeah. Gag me with that sentiment. So ultimately this is a lot of stupid on every end. It's really dumb for Trump to say this, and because it, it, what it looks like to the average voter, especially one that's not following all these things all that closely, they're looking at it and going, oh, see, Trump, you know, what, what he's doing here is he's trying to flex his authoritative muscle and use this crisis as an excuse to just go ahead and get the judges that he wants through. That's not really an entirely accurate way to categorize it, and the reason that I say that is because the majority in the Senate is Republican. And so he probably would have gotten those appointments anyway. It's not as though Congress not meeting, or sorry, it's not as though Congress meeting would mean that he would get all those federal judges turned down. So the idea that he's trying to slip something past the goalie, that's not really accurate. If there were a Democrat majority in the Senate, yeah, probably that's a fair assessment. But the fact that the vast majority of President Trump's federal judge picks have gone through anyway is kind of indicative of the fact that he doesn't really, he wouldn't be getting different judges whether he made recess appointments or he was appointing them and they went through the congressional approval process. I don't see this as a thing that President Trump is, is saying because he wants some judges that he knows wouldn't pass the, the mustering Congress and to be able to get them confirmed through the Senate. It's more like he's upset that it's not happening and he wants to get those judges through, and he knows that they're going to approve pretty much all of his federal judges anyway, so he just wants to expedite that process since they're not doing it right now, which is not an unfair thing to want. And so, even though I think that he's correct in that, you have to understand that to the average voter, this looks real bad. It looks as though President Trump is trying to seize on presidential authority and increase his own political influence and power and using the coronavirus to do so. The fact that he's whining about this is kind of like celebrities whining about being confined in a giant mansion with three swimming pools. It's kind of the same look. You see what I'm saying? It's not that the complaint is completely unfounded. It's more that we just don't want to hear it right now. <laughs> And so I think that there's a bit of a timing issue and an optics issue when it comes to what President Trump is actually doing. But on Congress's side, look, either do your freaking jobs or just go ahead and call recess. Go ahead and adjourn the Congress yourself. This is not a hard thing to do. Now, personally, I don't have a problem with Congress being out of session. I don't have a problem with Congress being out of session for pretty much the entirety of the year. I would be fine with that. Remember, there was a time where Congress really only met for like three weeks out of the year. And so I'd be perfectly fine with them going ahead and adjourning, and especially since they know that if Trump does make any recess appointments, they're probably ones that he would have gotten confirmed anyway. There's not much chance that the Republican-controlled Senate would have not confirmed them. So Congress needs to step up. Congress needs to either call themselves and adjourn, or they need to figure out a way to approve it either way. So there's really wrong on both sides here. Uh, I just hate the fact that the American public is probably going to read this story completely wrong because they have a lack of understanding of how these things normally operate. 
Congress, if you want to be out of session, that's your business. But quit with this straddling the fence garbage. Either be in session and actually conduct business, or don't be in session. But don't just hold these one minute long meetings and say that they're that we're technically still in session now. No, either declare a recess or adjourn and let the president go ahead and, and make recess appointments or don't. But this in-between crap isn't really helping anybody. <laughs> It's not exactly a secret that YouTube really doesn't like conservatives, so I'm asking for your help. I don't want to stick it to them, I just genuinely want to show them that conservative voices do matter, and that there is a big, passionate audience out there that wants to hear them. So give us a like and subscribe, remembering to click the notification bell, and show YouTube that you do want more content like this. Sincerely, thank you.